Hello and welcome back to Ada Pulse, the community funded news channel, keeping you up to date with all the news and emerging projects that are in and around the Cardano ecosystem. And remember, because we're community funded, there is no coin shilling or paid promotion. We don't even discuss token price. We're just here to disseminate information and deliver it to you in a way that's easy for you to understand. Now, today we are discussing Jed. Uh, and this is part two of our deep dive into the stable coin in Cardano. And this is by our veteran writer, Libelion, who you may have seen before, been with us for a very long time. Now, if you remember, in part one, we discussed, uh, and the link is above if you haven't seen it already, where we discussed uh, Jed's uh, protocol and, and how its stabilization algorithm works. And today we'll be discussing more about the real world Sort of implications and how it works and how you can use it and things like that now before we go on please remember to click the like button and hit subscribe and hit that bell button so you can get notified as soon as we've got content available and do share as far as you can we are an educational platform we do want to reach as many people as possible now i'm josh from atn state paul your presenter for today let's just crack straight on with this Now, as we discussed before, remember, Jed is an algorithmic stablecoin over collateralized up to eight times and with proof of reserve on chain, which basically means anyone can see how much circulating ADA are in the reserve. Now, we talked about the reserve currency Shen and the fact that ADA is the true reserve. Shen is an asset that just acts as a cushion for when the price in ADA just drops. But none of this really makes any sense unless you can see it in a sort of real world example. A practical exercise. So let's just suppose the market value of ADA is $1. So yeah, $1 will buy you one ADA. Now we'll do the example. We use Alice and Bob, as everyone always does. But it's Bob this time because he's buying some Shen. He's going to buy 5,000 Shen. So the protocol mints it when he pays the 5,000 ADA that's required. So now there is 5,000 ADA in the reserve. Now anyone can start buying Jed. So we have Alice comes along who wants to buy 1,000 Jed. So she needs to give up 1,000 ADA. And so they're not, there will now be a total of 6,000 ADA in the reserve. So 1,000 being for the Jed and 5,000 for the Shen. So altogether we have 6,000. And Jed, remember, is 1,000 in circulation. So now even if the market value of ADA falls to a quarter of what it was, so in this case, 25 cents, the algorithm can still serve the holders of the 1,000 Jed whenever they like. Except now when they return the Jed, they get four ADA per one Jed. Now in our example, the Shen to Jed ratio is 500%. Now you could work it out. 5,000 divided by 1,000 times 100 gives you, yeah, 500%. If the ratio between the reserve of Shen and Jed in circulation is less than 400%, the algorithm won't actually allow uh, Shen holders to exchange for ADA. The ADA in the reserve is accounted for in two parts, in two ways. One part is the liability. Because you've got to remember Jed is a liability because, remember, it has to match the USD value of $1. And the rest is basically just equity. In our example, with 6,000 ADA in the reserve and with ADA at one, priced at $1, remember, 1,000 ADA is liabilities. And then the other 5,000 ADA is the reserve equity, basically shares owned proportionally by all the Shen holders, because remember, there's 5,000 Shen in circulation. But, you know, in our example, it's just Bob. So the relationship between liabilities and equity will change according to the volatility of the, you know, the ADA price to the dollar. So if we take our example and the ADA market price grows with no change in the reserves, there'll be more equity ADA than liabilities. Now, on the other hand, if the ADA price falls to, say, in our example, you know, 50 cents, without increasing the amount of ADA in the reserve, the liability will increase to 2,000 ADA, you know, to, the main, to maintain the 1,000 Jed with the parity of $1. And the reserves equity will fall from 5,000 ADA to 4,000. The total reserves are offset between assets and liabilities. And in our example, 
um, it holds a total of 6,000, with 2,000 now being liabilities and 4,000 being the asset. When the price of ADA starts to fall, uh, Shen holders um, aren't likely going to be selling their Shen because it's not profitable for them to do that. And the algorithm won't even allow them to do so if the ratio is below 400% minimum. So in that case, it is profitable from the economic point of view to buy the Shen, therefore adding to the reserve. Of course, even if everything's all locked up, there are private negotiations. So Bob and Alice, in our example, they can still chat to each other and trade Shen for ADA. They just can't do it within the protocol. But yeah, they can just do it on their own. White paper theorems one and two show parity preservation. Now check out this image if it helps just to show you, give you a visual aid because the Jed and Shen minting and burning fees will be collected in ADA and allocated to the pool, increasing the pool and reward coefficient for Shen holders. Shen holders will be able to redeem their rewards by burning their Shen. Jed minting and burning operating fees are also paid in ADA, then converted to Koti currency periodically to be included in the Koti treasury. Community analysis. Now we think what the community are also saying is vitally important. And as everyone knows, the Cardano community is rich, full of intellectual talent. So what Libelan has done, he's selected three analysts who have made some interesting um, observations. So firstly, we've got Suvaj, um, who's actually a writer for Ada Pulse, but co-founder of the blog Just The Metrics and from the YouTube channel This Week in Cardano. He developed this Twitter thread explaining the eight theorems of Section 3, stability properties of the white paper. So we're just going to quote him verbatim. So take a look at these, take a look at these tweets. The stability properties of Jed are based on provable theorems, which are mathematically tested and verified using formal techniques. Theorem one and two, peg upper and lower bound maintenance. This theorem states that the price will not go above or beyond the set price. Theorem three, peg robustness during market crashes. It states that up to a, a set limit, Depending on the reserve ratio, the peg is maintained even when the price of the base coin crashes. Example, if the reserve ratio is 1 to 3, Jed can withstand a market crash of 66% without losing the peg. Theorem 4. No insolvency. This theorem states that the equity of the smart contract governing Jed can never go bankrupt or negative, meaning if you hold the stable coin, you will always be able to get your money back given the peg is still maintained. Theorem 5. No bank runs. This basically means in the case of a market crash, there is no incentive for users to race to redeem their stablecoins. The smart contract treats all users fairly and equally and paid accordingly. Theorem 6. Monotonically increasing equity per reserve coin. This basically means provided that the exchange rate remains constant the equity or the value returned to the holders of the reserve coin always increases and reserve coin holders are guaranteed to profit from this theorem seven no reserve draining this theorem states that provided that the exchange rate remains constant it is impossible for a malicious user to execute a sequence of actions that would steal reserves from the bank or in this case smart contract Theorem 8, bounded dilution. This basically means that there is a, a limit to how many reserve coin holders and their profit can be diluted due to the issuance of more reserve coins. And this incentivizes users to hold reserve coins. Then there's Matthew Plowman, founder of Mehun Group, who also discussed this in a Twitter thread, but with a very you know high critical sense. It was a really long thread, so we've got to summarise here because um, there were some admitted errors as well. Because he wondered, how big does Shen's buffer need to be to absorb the volatility of ADA? And he maintained that it's not defined anywhere in the white paper. Now, Matthew Plowman said, and we'll quote, uh, the paper's authors simply hand waved the question away in section three, stating users have no incentive to trade outside the range. 
The authors pay lip service to fiat-backed stablecoins and state that the biggest problem is trust in the entity holding the securities. I mean, this is true. Only Tether knows what Tether holds. But later said, Theorem 4, the no insolvency, is a mess. Theorem 6 and 7 presuppose an impossibility. The same impossibility, along with another one, is in Theorem 8, which is about Shen. Then, he adds, authors know that there are minor issues with Jed, including haircuts for stablecoin holders and the high likelihood that Shen holders would run if they get close to the 4 to 1 peg and may start absorbing losses. Extended Jed does not fix these. The authors know all of this too. They admit it in the back after plebs stop reading because of the scary maths. He also adds, so again, why is the 4 to 1 peg right? I don't know, but have a strong sense it came from figuring that the 80% cushion would be sufficient to attract buyers into Jed and 25% leverage plus fees would be sufficient to attract Shen buyers. Statistical experience driven by ADA volatility would demand a bigger cushion and on the order of between 5 to 1 and 7 to 1 to guard against a deadly 3 sigma event but that ties up and reduces leverage for Shen, hardly what we expect from Cardano's rigorous methods. Then finally, Zygomeb criticised the minimal version of Jed with this tweet. I heard rumours that the release version of Jed will use the minimal version. I refrained from speculating. Now it has been confirmed, I would not advise anyone to use this system, as according to the document itself, it is not a very robust design mainly the reserve drain part. The white paper, uh, which we'll have a link for in the description below, in, in section four, known minor issues of minimal JED warns of six issues that will be resolved with the extended JED version. So in the roadmap published by Coty, the exclusive issuer of JED, um, it was announced that the minimal JED will be the first version available in January 23. Learn from the mistakes of your neighbours. Now, obviously, you can't disregard the mistakes that others have made because naturally you can make the same mistakes yourself. There are stable coins that have their parity based on physical reserves, such as USDT or USDC, with that basically a, for every token, there is a dollar in the bank. So we can't really compare them with JED because its monetary policy, it, their monetary policy is not governed by an algorithm. It's by the sort of arbitrariness of its of its managers. Now Jed can be compared to DAI from MakerDAO or UST from the Terra blockchain. And you know, judging by the big massive failure of the latter, uh, it's probably a good idea to compare the two and see what's different. So firstly, you know, we've got USD UST, I should say. So the Terra UST stablecoin maintained its USD peg through direct arbitrage with the Luna token, you know, which was the Terra blockchain cryptocurrency. UST's own algorithm was not designed to react to the loss of parity, whether it was trading at 97 cents or a dollar and three cents. To maintain the parity of UST with the dollar, arbitrages had to work using Terra Station's market exchange function. So before the purchase of UST, the stablecoin was minted and Luna was burned. In the case of Luna's price increase, users could sell UST, mint Luna for their holdings, and make a profit by adding UST to Terra's pool. Thus, the supply of UST increased. The authors of the algorithm were confident that arbitrage could handle all market turmoil. And as we know, this assumption was pretty fucking off. The stablecoin lost parity for increasing its issuance and for trying to maintain its stability in a market arbitration based on a volatile cryptocurrency. All this was enhanced when the Anchor Protocol offered market returns of up to 20% per year to users who deposited their UST on the platform. Up to 75% of all UST circulating supply was locked up in Anchor. The fall in price of Luna, as it happened to all cryptocurrencies, um, you know, in the year 22, unleashed the beginning of the end. UST deposits in Anchor 
fell massively, you know, sharply, and users closed their positions to take a profit. Thus, UST entered the open market. When it became obvious that there was no longer a lunar security to back each UST that was minted, that's when the run started. UST's loss of parity generated panic and sell-offs of the stablecoin, and this led to the minting of Luna. Now, a large amount of Luna entered the market and caused its price to completely collapse. So increasing the fall that was already existing in the entire crypto market. As everyone knows, 2022 for crypto was not a great year. So now let's talk about Jed. Because Jed's algorithm, as we've already explained, maintains an over collateralization using the reserve currency Shen to cushion the volatility of ADA. And ADA being, as we said, the true reserve. Now, Jed could lose um, parity temporarily if the market value of ADA were to plummet extremely and rapidly, say by like 90% in a few days. If such a condition lasted for an extended period of time, Jed would remain unpegged until ADA's value increased or until people bought Shen, which, of course, would be really profitable because you sell on the way up. But that's what increases the reserves. So that is why the design of Jed has an excess of guarantees. And also the protocol blocks the burning of the stablecoin to avoid, you know, that death spiral in case of a price fall. I mean, this image kind of put, highlights the main differences between the two. But I mean, what I would like to add is unlike with Luna, with its burning and arbitrary issuance policy, which is kind of disastrous for any financial system, Cardano has a clear deterministic ADA policy because there is no burning and its maximum issuance is 45 billion. Final words. Now, when it comes to design, there is no perfect answer. There are just some designs that are better than others. Now, but, you know, considering they're contemplating the greatest number of risk variables in the protocol implies, in theory, that it has less chance of failure. And we all know that IOG is a company that develops peer-reviewed research and that scientific support adds a greater probability of success. So the theory is in sight and the design of the JED protocol looks solid. But of course, time will tell. You know, who knows what problems we will encounter as there may be some that have never been encountered before. So that brings us to the end of the episode for today. Remember, the full article can be found on the Ada Pulse website. And don't forget to click the like button, hit subscribe and hit the bell button so you can get notified as soon as we've got content available. And share these videos. We're educational. We want to reach as many people as possible. So that's it. I'm Josh, your presenter for Ada Pulse, stake pool owner of ATM. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.